<laughs> We're in the zoosphere. <laughs> Actually, I, I do believe we are. <laughs> this, this is the crumbling. Is the crumbling of the um, of the structures as we have them? Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Global Kinship, exploring the emerging oosphere. Brian Swim, our esteemed good. guest, discovered that this retirement party. Okay, we, we need to sure get it. We need to get everybody on mute. Please, um, please mute yourself, everybody. Brian Swim, our esteemed guest, discovered that his retirement party scheduled for later today was not virtual, but in person. This made our previous time unmanageable. So we are grateful that on such an auspicious day, he is still willing to meet with us at this earlier time and endure our technological snafus. Thank you all for adjusting. When we made the switch from creation and crisis to global kinship, we made a switch from fear to hope. Not wishing, not wanting, but hope, built on the potential of our human nature. We also switched from focusing on material solutions, so our planetary crisis, to immaterial ones. The powerful dimension of our hearts and minds, the verdant space within and between us that births community, creativity, and collaboration. That compassion and purposefulness that spurs us to reinvent the way we live on this physical realm. We are in a perfect Einstein moment. We have stopped doing the same things over and over again, expecting something new to happen. We are shifting so that something new might happen. So let's get to work and bring forth the new humanity. Welcome. Just a couple of quick technical notes. One you've already heard, please keep yourself muted unless you're um, asking a question. Um, and uh, when it comes to that time for questions, I would, uh, for those of you who might not have been here before, I would direct your attention to the reactions button on your Zoom toolbar. And under that, you're going to find the phrase raise hand. That will put a raised hand in the corner of your video and it puts you to the top of our screens so we all know who's lining up to ask a question. And I think that's all I need to point out today. Penny? Great. Welcome all, and thank you for being flexible and coming along for a treasure time with Brian Swim. In his bio, it right, there is written, the major institutions of the modern world, including our schools and universities, our corporations, our religious organizations, and our legal systems are in transition. All of them are implicated in the ongoing distortion of climate and ecosystems. The question for any concerned person is how to best assist the transition. Brian has been contemplating this and many other questions of the universe for his adult life. And if you've had a chance to read Cosmogenesis, you know that he's put himself center in the way his own life has evolved and become energy flowing within energy flowing. It is with great pleasure. We're going to work through the four paths with Brian today. Um, first, talking about context, then the, the via negativa, and on to the creativa and transformativa. Um, by way of context, and I'll have Brian elaborate, but on the first page of his Cosmogenesis book, or in the prologue, it says, the universe began 14 billion years ago with the emergence of the elementary particles in the form of primordial plasma, which quickly morphed into atoms of hydrogen, helium, and lithium. A hundred million years later, galaxies began to appear and in one of these, the Milky Way. Minerals arranged themselves into living cells that constructed advanced life, including evergreen trees, coral reefs, 
and the vertebrate nervous systems that humans used to use to discover this entire sequence of human development. It could have stopped there, <clears throat> but Brian, elaborate, please. <laughs> I apologize, Brian, we're trying to get me uh, to where I can make you full screen. For now, you get to be among the masses. <laughs> You're muted, Brian. <laughs> you're still, you're still, you're still muted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> On it goes. I was really revving That's myself up there. <laughs> so, uh, just to begin with our the context, as 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 Penny was saying. So then, our context right now is that you know we're a gathering of <clears throat> of of people. Uh, all of all of us have been uh, searching and um, living out these these questions, and we uh, there's little doubt that we we just happen to be living in a a, a transition time of of major proportions. We. We are the ones who are living at the end of of you know what we call the modern period, and we're we're struggling to enter into this um, this new era. It goes by many names. Uh, you know, my favorite is um, from Thomas Berry, the Ecozoic. Uh, there are many many names. Here's another one that it isn't as well known, but it comes from uh, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. And he called the era we're moving into the psychozoic. The psychozoic. So, and I, I think um, both of these, these these words are a little bit different. Ecozoic is, is an attempt to, to say, the fundamental focus of this new era will be the earth community, the integral earth community, which is beautiful from Thomas. And um, for Teilhard, his angle is a little different. He's, he's, he's pointing out something that is, that is real, namely that uh, the human psyche has has enveloped the entire planet. Every biome, every ecosystem is enveloped by a human consciousness. I mean, this has never happened in human history. It's never happened in biological history that a the mentality of a single species surrounds the planet. So, um, what does this mean? Uh, what, what, how are we going to move forward with this awareness? And, and that's what all of us uh, in different ways, wow, I just suddenly got bigger. <laughs> and that's what all of us in different ways are, are, are questioning. And we have, we have some, you know, some brilliant insights into how we move forward uh, and we're celebrating in the, today the insight from uh, Matthew Fox that <clears throat> a, a new and deeper understanding of the universe has led to a new and deeper understanding of spiritual development we and we we live in a time of of um the, the you know, the church, the churches and temples, synagogues, uh, they're in a collapsed state, uh, as we're all well aware that. Uh, so we're in the midst of a collapse and uh, an emergence of something new. And I don't even want to pretend that um, 
that I have uh, answers at all, but I, I have uh, just uh, questions and and some cosmological facts that can that can help us in this this ongoing uh, movement into this new era. <clears throat> I, the first thing I would say is that to talk about the psychozoic as a, as a mind, as a mind that's enveloping Earth, uh, emphasizes the collective nature of our moment. It, the, we are we are individuals, yes, but we actually converge into a a unitary presence. It's a unified humanity. That, that is where our thinking needs to uh, begin. Is, is the, and that's why I, the context here, uh, the, the number of us on this, this gathering, it's an example. Not, not one of us has the, um, the total vision of what's happening, but together we do. I mean, we have uh, uh, amazing uh, wisdom that comes from a, a unified humanity. That is where I'd want to start with. But now, uh, the modern mind, which I sometimes call the modern industrial mind, it it's moving forward. Uh, in ways that that need to be examined. Some parts of the modern industrial mind are are very important, but some are not. And at, at the very the very least, what we need to do is to be aware of of how our thinking uh, is shaped by elements of the modern mind that are no longer helpful. Uh, this, I think, um, <laughs> in a sense, this this edges into via negativa, all right? Because I'm talking about, uh, you know, some things have to be let go of, but but all of the paths fold in on each other, so that's okay. But th here's here's the main point I wanted to get to is this: it is very easy for us, when we think about moving into a new era, it is very easy for us to, to imagine this process as an engineering project so that we, we, we locate where the di difficulties are, we formulate new ways of interacting with the environment, uh, we build new institutions. All of this has to happen, but another Another starting point is necessary. Instead of, instead of thinking of ourselves mm. as in control or, or need to take control of the, the process, we need to also recognize that a, a fundamental shift in our, in our self, self concept is necessary and it's it's this <clears throat> the image now comes from an event uh two billion years ago two billion years ago uh more or less and over a long period of time uh, individual cells began to join together now life had existed for billions of years, and these individual cells uh, were doing just fine. They were surviving just fine. But, but then we come to this, this crisis, this crisis moment. Uh, we, know, we know something about it. It was <clears throat> was the release of oxygen into the atmosphere that was caused by the unicellular organisms 
breaking down water molecules. But our situation has a similarity. Suddenly, a new, a new kind of atmosphere was coming forth, which was, which was deleterious for all the organisms on the planet. They were all unicellular. And they were they were thrown into terrible suffering and massive uh, extinction of all kinds of these these species. But they amazingly they discovered they discovered a new way of moving forward that enabled them to embrace the situation and build the eukaryotic cell. They build they build a cell that was able to deal with this oxygen. And the cells began to come together and build multicellular organisms. Now, so we, we are in that moment at a different level. We're at a different level. So that the, the modern industrial assumptions, which were fine, they were fine, for a long period of time, have become toxic, have become ruinous for the entire planet. And um, our, our response is to build not a multicellular organism, but a multicellular superorganism. Superorganism is one of the words used by scientists to talk about collectives that have a mind of their own. Uh, these are not um, attractive images, unfortunately, but they, they help understand our moment. And that is an ant colony. An ant colony, um, what, what's, what's amazing is that the, the Individual ants all know how to get a nutrients from a particular source, but not one of the ants knows all of the directions to all of the sources. So you have you have then the appearance of a brain composed of brains. All the little ants have a nervous system, but together they they build this collective, the ant colony. We we and we can call that a um, a brain of brains or a collective mind. So we we're in that moment, we're in that moment when when humans are unifying and giving birth to we are we've already done it really we already we already have created a collective mind but now we're approaching this task with full consciousness of what we are doing we and the i mean to me the exciting the exciting thing here is that uh, every everyone is involved it is we're, we're finding our way into uh, deep relationships with one another that uh, we, we would call, I mean, that have been called uh, mystical partnerships, you know, mystical uh, love relationships, uh, finding our our meaning in the community. That has that has taken on this fabulous challenge of of reinventing what it means to be human. When we realize that each of us is is a fourteen billion year event, I like to think of the um, I like to think of the. This 14 billion year event, uh, using a phrase, uh, the, the column of time. The column of time. And so that uh, you might, 
you might try this out so that see each of us, you know, we, we have a feeling for how we come from our parents and, and you go back and come from the earlier humans and you go back and you come from the primates, that whole sequence, that whole sequence is, is an, is an actuality as opposed to being just a cerebral notion. It is a cerebral notion. We're talking about it. We understand it intellectually. But now go the next step. That sequence is at work now as you. And the, the examples to illustrate this are endless. I'm just going to pick one to give you a, a feeling for this. Uh, all of us right now are digesting digesting uh, food we've eaten today. So we've, that there's this magical process by which elements of the earth are, are being transformed into our skin and our thoughts. All of this is happening, uh, this, uh, this magical process. And one of the crucial molecules that make this happen it's called cytochrome c we need poets to give these 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 molecules different names cytochrome c was constructed 3 billion years ago so that generation after generation after generation cytochrome c comes up again comes up again <laughs> that moment that moment in the past 3 billion years ago is acting now as you so and if you can uh, so the challenge is to realize that that we, we our roots go all the way back to the primordial fireball the, the their ability to move to feel our emotions our ideas they go back to the primordial fireball and so when we when we form a deep relationship uh, with another a human we're engaged with this challenge of moving into the future we are part of a cosmological activity. From that perspective, from that perspective, that each of us is a mode of the entire universe, from that perspective, we will give birth to this emerging era. And then the we, the we who are giving birth includes these this vast column of time back to the beginning all of us together are in search and we you know it that's the that's the thrill of the cosmological context it, it is a source it's a source of a seemingly uh, endless energy, <clears throat> and out of that, out of that context, um, we will we will have a very different perspective on what we mean by the economy, what we mean by education. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, Gail, I'm going to draw you in. Penny, any any further reflections on? Any of this? Hmm. Ah. Well, what I think of is the electron and, and the story that you wrote in um, Order of the Sacred Earth and that an electron can lay dormant for so, so long, but it's in the engagement with others that everything happens. And so I'm hearing that in what you're sharing. Yeah. And I'm also wondering if we couldn't step into the via negativa a little bit and ask about the forces that don't get it, 
that out of fear and hatred are are kind of stymieing the progression what what would you say about that about I mean, it's going to happen, right? I hear in your voice that it's going to happen anyway. Yeah, yeah. But how do we hold the other side of it when when it seems so clear? Yeah, that um, you know, um, let, let me begin with with how Thomas Berry um, approached this question. And I found it very helpful. Um, he said, what he, what he impressed upon me is that the greatest evil uh, throughout humanity is, is perpetuated by those who are convinced they can eliminate evil. And he, what he meant by that is, and this is a um, this is a phrase uh, from Alfred North Whitehead, really one of the finest philosophers of uh, Western history. Alfred North Whitehead made the simple declaration that the, the fundamental problem uh, of the modern mind. So he's he's trying to talk about why why has so much violence been committed? The fundamental problem of the modern mind is that it is convinced things can be simply located. Hmm. I mean, that is a, this is this is a guy that you know studied mathematics and physics, philosophy, <clears throat> and he, after a lifetime of pondering, this question of, you know, the challenges of, of embracing uh, our situation, he concluded that the difficulty was that we think things are simply located. So, you know, um, Bob is uh, right there in Toronto, you know, that's where he is. He's in Toronto. You know, and Gail, Gail is in, Gail, where are you? Boston. But Gail's in Boston. She's right there in Boston. She's in that house down this street. That's where she is. And Alfred North Whitehead, you know, speaking from a deep wisdom, insists that we are not simply located, that each of us is a mode of the entire universe. Um, so that the universe is present in every blade of grass. The blade of grass isn't just, you point to it and you say it's right there. You have, you have a Cartesian coordinate axis system and you give the number for where its position is. No, no, uh, that may be true, but it's partial. Mm. So when, um, when Thomas Berry makes the, the statement that <clears throat> evil is perpetuated by those who think they can eliminate evil, what he means is that <clears throat> that we come we come to the conclusion that the difficulty is coming from these people or this individual, right. and if we can just eliminate them, then things are going to be okay. And so, <clears throat> as opposed to that, as opposed to that, we have this. A, a, an extremely difficult ideal, the ideal of recognizing that each element, each person in the universe is somehow important, somehow. And and needs to be uh, considered a, a, an integral part of what is happening, and that that means the 
that means the the recognition, the humility, that that no one perspective uh, is sufficient. We need to actually you need to reflect upon all of the different proposals and challenges. <clears throat> I when I think about the um, you know the violence that's that's being perpetuated, um, like we have warfare and. And and we have you know suicide and when I when I my own my own response to that is that <clears throat> in part it in part it comes from the the ex, the extreme sensitivity of of human beings we we are. A, so so easily influenced touched and so we when we do encounter violence or uh, destructive situations it penetrates down down so deeply in us and then we in order to survive uh, we 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 cover it up pretend it's not there try to go forward but it comes out. It comes out in in these acts of violence. So when I when I think about <clears throat> the difficult challenges around the planet today, and I I I think of the healing process may require a million years, or if that's too much to even think about, it may require. 20,000 years and that of dedicated compassionate um involvement and and that that process of of healing and finding a way uh to to embrace embrace and transform the trauma that we carry that pro that process is not something we're going to just get through and then start the the task of reinventing humanity no that is the process of reinventing the human entering into a, a 10,000 year uh, healing process from all the different perspectives that we need to attend to gail penny any, any, uh, well, I, I have, I have heard. I am from a reliable, but obviously forgettable source that um, this is a time of peace in the world among human beings more than any other time in the world, despite how terrible it is, and despite all the wars that are going on. That we are, in fact, making some progress as far as being able to live together in peace, and. Uh, that challenged by the time that um, it's the highest migration ever. Of course, we have more people. So, but yeah. but so we have those we have those two things going on right now. And I, I, I hope, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, I hope. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and, and that that too would be. Um, so we had the via negativa, but it now it flips back to the via positiva. It it you know. It, it's so it's so important for the spiritual life uh, to become ever more deeply aware of of the blessings we're showered with. Mm. I mean, this is what I hear when you say when you quote that. I I believe it is true. I, I believe that the uh, the amount of violence in 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 various ways is is descending, is going down, and uh, we forget so quickly um, how much has been done and given to us. So thanks, Gil. Yeah, extremely important. Penny, did you? <clears throat> well, we in the West have kind of focused in on a certain level of lifestyle that's dependent on a, on a false economy, the economy of wealth. And 
perhaps this would be a good time to move into the video that you talked about. And do you yeah. want to say something before we watch it? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, so the basically, it's the idea of money and wealth, money and wealth. Um, the, the one the one insight I'm trying to celebrate is that in the modern industrial mentality, money and wealth are identified. Wealth is defined as lots of money. Uh, and I think this is uh, it is is going to change radically as we move into this new era. Money will be understood differently, and wealth will be understand understood much differently. Now, in the in the video, I um, <laughs> I, I I I make the statement about wealth being different than money, I, but I don't. I wish I dwelt on it longer. So, but if you if you go into it, and you're and you're anticipating. Uh, the difference between money and wealth, uh, I think the impact will be better, and we can we can discuss it. But it's it's um, it's it's basically the story of the invention, the invention of money, and the influence that has had on the world, and then at the, near the end, distinguishing the power of money from the overwhelmingly important idea of wealth. Maybe one last thing to say this is that the, the base of the word wealth is health and wholeness, well-being. And, and so you'll see um, the point I'm making. Okay, fun. I hope you all have popcorn. <laughs> okay, Bob, it's the, oh, wow, here it is. <laughs> Money was invented during the classical era of humanity, and it inaugurated a new era of human evolution. Money was such a powerful new invention we are only now beginning to understand how money is different from wealth. I'm Brian Thomas Swim with the Human Energy Project. Our series of short films explore the way in which humanity is building a global organism called the noosphere. As we deepen our understanding of the noosphere, we discover a collective meaning and purpose which can help us address our global challenges together. In today's film, we look at the way in which trade networks during the classical period of humanity participated in the building of this noosphere. Money was invented a number of times by classical civilizations. A primary example is what took place in 3rd century BCE China. Emperor Qing Shi Huang had a problem. Tribes in the north were attacking his cities. He had warriors ready to fight, but unfortunately, the horses in his empire did not have the strength to support his armed warriors. The horse's bone structure was too weak due to a lack of selenium in the soil. There were tribes to the west who had mastered the challenge of rearing powerful horses, so he set up a trading relationship with them. For this to work, roads and ox carts had to be built Military protection and food supply had to be arranged. Language facility with the various cultures and dialects had to be learned. In the midst of all these complications, the emperor came up with the idea of money. In China's case, it was copper coins. With this new means of exchange, every product along the entire road could be converted first to coins and then to whatever product was desired by its ability to transform any human product into any other human product, money enabled trade to soar. An entirely unexpected capacity of money changed the course of history. 
In order to understand this feature, we turn to the universe as a whole. The universe proceeds by storing huge amounts of energy in forms that can be used for creative action. For instance, as the universe expands, it transforms heat into gravitational energy. Picture a small volume of the primordial fireball as it expands out to a sphere trillions of miles in diameter. The sphere is cooler than the fireball, but the atoms now possess enough gravitational energy to contract violently and create stars. The same thing happens with life. With the invention of photosynthesis, photons of sunlight can be captured by the chlorophylls and stored as energy. Now these tiny puffs of energy from individual photons can accumulate and can be transformed into a cheetah running 60 miles an hour. In the case of early China, Qing Shi Huang amassed a huge amount of copper coins, enough to construct the Great Wall of China. It is money's energy storing capacity that enables so much to happen. It empowered humans to build pyramids and cathedrals, structures beyond anything created in three billion years of life. No wonder humans became mesmerized by money. But the human does not exist for money. We exist to build wealth. In our example of ancient China, money consisted of the copper coins the emperor made. The copper coins were not the wealth. Wealth consisted of the land, the transportation systems, the skill to create silk clothing and ceramics, the efficiency of monetary exchange, the communication systems, the wisdom for rearing strong horses, the keeping of records, the protection of trade routes. Wealth consisted of this entire system. Money is a way of storing the energy of human creativity, a spectacular invention. Wealth is the capacity for the ongoing generation of human creativity. Building wealthy systems is our primary aim and ultimate meaning. When we build wealth, we are building the Noosphere. You know this. This might be a good place to 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 start the uh, question and answer uh, period. Gail, Penny, what do you think? Because I'd love to hear the responses from various sure. people. Let's, sure. let's just not forget the talking about um, the noosphere consciousness and yes. the um, conference towards the end, maybe. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we uh, usually Bob. Bob, you want to? Bob usually um, conducts the Q and A. If you, have, if, you have a, if you have a question for Brian, just uh, click on your reactions button and raise hand, and that'll pop you to the top of our screen. We have, uh, I hope it's Hasino Patel. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Hi, Brian. Hi, Hasina. Hi. It's always such a pleasure to um, listen to you and to learn from you. And oh, I was thanks. just, I, I was just um, listening to what you said. We are not simply located. Each of us is the universe is present in every blade of grass. And um, you know the question that that Penny raised about well, what about the contrast? What about the evil and so on? And I feel like recently I've been feeling that it all leads to the light because what seems like polar opposites um, is just the path to oneness. Would we really be able to know and see and appreciate the light if there wasn't the darkness, if there wasn't that contrast? Just like here in South Africa, we're having load shedding, mandatory power cuts. And when I hear the fridge singing, it's such a blessing, which was mm -hmm. never like that before. 
And, um, you know, that plays into the whole money and wealth um, part. I read the Akashic Records and your your movie just uh, your video just like confirmed for me what what also came through that um the message that um money and wealth are not um abundance only life can um can breathe money or currency into existence um it has no power without without us and i'd just like to hear your thoughts yeah, my um, the, the, we tend to think of the money as having the power, but so here's the emperor of China could build the the this the wall, a great wall of China, but if you took those, <laughs> if you took those copper coins and and you went to the moon, I mean, what could you do with them? So it it what what it all depends on. The community, so a community that that um, draws forth a human creativity, draws forth life, is what's is what wealth is, and without that, the money is 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 completely meaningless, and and just just to think um think of wealth in those terms, and go through um, your day uh, with that in mind. You start to realize just how wealthy we are, and 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 one of them, one of the the ways of talking about wealth is to talk about a, a global kinship. I mean, the the work of of Gail and Penny and Bob to to, to bring together, bring us together, and to share ideas and and ignite our creativity. That that's wealth. And the that we have the technology to do this. It's yeah, we are um, unbelievably wealthy. Thanks, Cena. Thank you, Cena. Patricia, um, you're muted. You're muted. Okay, thank you very much. Um, what about artificial intelligence? Uh -huh. I've that is a big challenge that we have right now could be added to this equation that's my question okay good uh okay. yes just um so everyone uh, we're all concerned about artificial intelligence and from a variety of different angles and i think uh we need to be we need to be alert and uh uh, skeptical of certain claims that have nothing to do with with true wealth. Uh, on the other hand, a, a way to think about artificial intelligence, especially you see this with uh, Chat GBT, if think of it as a, a way in which we have invented uh, a, a means for bringing the best thinking, the best knowledge to every person on the planet. So that we we don't there isn't a need to reinvent things. That that's the way I, I think of it. I I mentioned the cytochrome C molecule invented three billion years ago, and it's present in us. So that the universe, the universe, the way to think about the universe is a developing being that that ratchets itself up. I don't like the word ratchet. Uh, it's it's mechanical, but still we know what that means. You get to a certain place and you hold it, so then you can go further. And you get to that place and you hold that. So that that I that's what is happening for me in the the benign part of artificial intelligence that we've just found this way to to share knowledge on for everyone. It's this democratic dispersal of knowledge. And and so that we can go further because the past knowledge insights are available to all of us. Much you, more needs to be said for sure, but that's my hopeful? view. Are you hopeful for with the challenge yes. of yes. artificial intelligence? Yes. Because Very much so. Yeah. I heard yeah. That it is like it came out of the box and it's uncontrollable. Yeah. Not? But the artificial intelligence, remember, is us. You know, it, it is humanity. It so is. we we need to we need to 
uh, we need to, to steer it. We need to shape but, it for sure. Yeah. Somebody yeah. is steering it already. Uh, I feel powerless and um, I don't know. That's why I am asking you, how is it uh, included in this evolution that we are part of? Think of it as, uh, as a, well, the, the phrase Thomas Berry used was, uh, it's transgenetic. So we have mm -hmm. DNA, we have our genetics. Uh, this is this is transgenetic. It's 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 culture that uh, that enables us to fulfill our role as humans. And that, what exactly that role is that requires a great deal of dialogue. But uh, in part, it is 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 to come to know we are the way in which the universe is becoming aware of itself. Now. Much of technology has been shaped by the modern industrial mindset and by all of that has to transform. But I'm trying to indicate that uh, in, a, in an ecozoic or a psychozoic uh, an era, we will be shaping artificial intelligence in ways that will bring forth wealth. I hope so. <laughs> so do I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Uh, Pat Carlone. Oh, thank you. Um, and thank you, Brian. Um, you know, um, from Thomas Berry, reading Thomas Berry, I got I got that I was disconnected from the from the earth. And so that led me to find ways to connect, to have experiences of connection. And I feel it. I feel that is happening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for me, it's happening. Yeah. For me and I see it happening. Um, so wow. I have places to go. My my sacred places <clears throat> in the woods. Great. With the with the with the redwoods. My friends. My kinship. Yeah. Um, so so what what I know is reading Cosmogenesis. Cosmogenesis, by the way, uh, was just an awesome book to read because thank you it's about thank you, your journey. And your experiences, and so what I'm asking is, uh, see, I listen to you and putting together your thoughts, and to me, they come from a deeper awareness of your connection to the universe. So yeah. what, what yeah. I'm what I'm wondering about is, I've had a glimpse. I've had a glimpse laying down in the redwoods. I got a sense one day of the power, the the awesome power. That's not me. I don't know what yeah. the, you know. Yeah, looking up through the trees and seeing the sky, there was a sense of, "Don't mess with me." You know, <laughs> I am. I am I, I'm not. I don't mean to use I. I don't know what to say. I'm beyond beyond anything that you can think of. I'm greater. You can't. I mean, even though I'm a part of it, I was getting a message. Yeah. So what I'm wondering about is. You know, when you when in cosmogenesis, I remember that point where you talked about the the sun uh, exploding photons coming down to your hand and you, on your skin and turning into warmth. You had this experience. I'm what I'm asking you, what what can I do to deepen my own connection now to the cosmos? Because I I get I know that I'm part of the earth. And I, I, de I get the idea that I'm, I'm part of, the, I am the cosmos. I am part of the cosmos. Part, I'm, I'm part and whole at the same time. But I yes. don't want to be able to get it deeper. And so are there, <laughs> are there rituals? Are there practices? Are there, you know, that's what I'm, <laughs> how, how did you, how did you get to the point <laughs> where you, <laughs> I mean, in that story, oh, let's call Thomas Berry. Let's get him here to Chicago. I mean, you know, that comes from a deeper place. So I'm just asking you if you have any suggestions. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, that I just I'm just laughing because I'm so delighted in listening to you. It's just it's just so great. You know, it's and I guess my my major suggestion would be, well, let me start off and say, I, you know, I don't know, so that we don't have, we don't have these rituals yet, but some of us are working on them. 
right? Some in this in this gathering right here, uh, there are people that have de dedicated their lives to working on that. I think it's the most creative activity you can do uh -huh. to create rituals to activate this this just as you described it, this awareness of this vast action taking place and that we're part of it and it's so far beyond us simultaneously, you know? So, but I, I guess, um, it, so what, in Cosmogenesis, I, I really put in a couple dozen of my experiences with the hope that it would activate um, the, the memory of, of, of those experiences in your own life, right? Yes. And so that together, as we start to compare these experiences, we will develop a culture, you know, with rituals that will bring forth this form of consciousness. But, you know, what I'm calling a noosphere consciousness, there are lots of different words, you know, but noosphere consciousness is just what you're describing. And so uh, I, I just hope that, that, my, that my own little experiences activate other others in the reflection, but I would give, here's my general idea, Pat, and for, it would be something like this. We have the, we have the theory of the evolution of the universe, the planet, life, and humanity. We have these theories, and, and, and they, you know, they're, it's, it's not hard to understand them. If you, you know, you skip the mathematics, they, they, you can study any, I talked about cytochrome C, I talked about, you know, the building of eukaryotic cell, all of these things are, are just a, a little bit of study, and you, you can get the theory. That's step one, right? Okay. And then step two is to, to, to encounter them and the powers directly uh just as you did you can lie down and look at the stars and then you, you know you have the ideas and the words in your mind and then you move into the experience itself that is or it can be looking at a leaf and thinking about photosynthesis or one of my favorites is is going to the ocean or, or a sea and reflecting on the fish and how they invented my brain. Like, mm -hmm. You know, it's just, um, so that would be my, that's my general idea. And it's, it's to learn the theory and then take it out and encounter uh, the universe directly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I love your story, Pat. It's great. Well, let, me, let me just, um, can I just say one other thing? Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you said about sharing. Um, I, I guess I go back to what, wait, Pat. Wait one second. My yeah. computer's about to die. Let me get. I have to get a battery. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> this. Sorry, uh, sorry, Pat. I didn't mean to cut you off too early. And I would. I have a little story that you might ponder, and that is Gail Warsella said, "When you go to the forest." you'll see a tree, then you will experience the forest. And then there's the fragrance. Ready, Pat, yeah. go. Fragrance um, is the universe. I, somebody else was talking, and so I- Oh, I'm me, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, then I'll share with you. Who is it that was talking? That was Penny. Okay, Penny, you want- I, I'll just step back a minute. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, I think she did. Okay. Uh, when I was, uh, I think I had this first experience in college. Um, and um, a moment of trans transfixing, transformation, where I call it not the, new, the newest fear, I, the eternal now. I, I call it the eternal now. I'm in all of a sudden uh, time. It, I'm, it, the present is so uh, present that there's no sense of time or anything. And there's no sense of me being separate. And those moments uh, come sometimes and they come in my spiritual place. And But it was just, I think, what 
really a, a devastating awareness it was when Thomas Berry told me I was disconnected. And that is such an important thing for people to understand about the devastation we're doing to the earth. We're such a part of the earth, and yet we think we're disconnected, you know, we're so I think that I want to, I want now to see, I want to have more of that present eternal now with yeah. regarding to the whole universe. So that's great. I, I, I like I, and I like your idea of sharing our, our experiences. Thank you so much. Thank you. I like, I like to step in here just because we have eight more people who want to talk. Yeah, sure. So I want to make Thanks, sure Pat. that everybody has a chance to talk to Brian. And uh, so, you know, time's running out just if you be mindful of that when you ask your questions. Okay, thanks, Pat. Um, Elaine. Brian, thank you very much for the distinction you make between wealth and money. That's very, very healthy. On the other hand, I, uh, I just listened to Michael O'Dowd and what he says about the uh, collapse. We're in the inevitable collapse that 80 civilizations have gone before us. And uh, and I appreciate that you want to take a long-term view, like 10,000 years. But in the meantime, <coughs> is our real wealth not going to be affected by this collapse that we are in the middle of? Where, uh, and, and in that sense, you know, uh, uh, do we need to get rid more of the anthropocentric view that we have taken, that you pointed to when you talked about the modern industrial uh, uh, mentality. So, could you say something about this? I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering where the collapse is going to take us in terms of wealth. It's a ecological. Well, I, yeah, no, no, extremely important. I, I would, I would say, for it, my own, my own orientation again, for your consideration is that the, um, the you know, the collapse is happening. It is. It, it's not. It's not something that oh it might happen next month. You know, it's happening, and we are, um, we are, we are losing. Uh, you know, we're losing wealth um, in the deepest sense every day, and so uh, the, you know, what I'm trying to do, and and I know many of us are doing the same thing. It's it's about waking up. So. Uh, just this this idea of, of beginning to recognize what true wealth is, when we start to really feel it, uh, we will start to protect it. And I can't I can't predict um, how much we will destroy before we wake up, but we can we can we can you know, throw our energies into this process of of waking up. Yeah. Thank you. Very important. Very important question. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Elaine. Um, Charlie Dorset, welcome. Thank you. Um, what think, a cool image. Wow. Thank you. Um, you've touched on this a little bit when you talked about ritual and some of the other things, but I've been wondering, a lot of us in the disability community, and I've noticed a lot more in the elder community, have started talk, talking about and thinking a lot about uh, subtle activism, things that we can do that may affect the, no the noosphere and the way that people think and act that does not require us being able to go out <laughs> and uh, in engage physically in the world. And I was wondering what your thoughts were about subtle activism and how that can actually affect the, the noosphere and if you had any thoughts around that at all. I, yeah, I do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure people have a lot more than I do, but I, just to give you my own personal view, um, this goes back to what I was talking about. We need to throw out the idea of, of simple location so that we, um, our, our, our presence, e each of us, our, our presence uh, is in different ways. Um, there in the in the planet as a whole and the universe as a whole uh and and this is people could say well if if we're present to the planet as a whole it's it's negligible and that's that's the part once again that it has to be um deconstructed 
if that's one of the elements of the modern mind that needs to, needs to be deconstructed. Not only are we, are we present everywhere, but it's possible that our presence uh, in a, in a non-local sense is crucial at certain times. And the, the image I use for this, it's, it's somewhat fanciful, but I, I, I take it as an image of, of how the universe works. A cloud of, of hydrogen atoms right, uh, needs to be of certain size so that, so that gravity draws together these atoms and it has to be a certain size. 10 to the 57th is the number. And so a, a cloud moves from being just a cloud to an early star with the addition of a, of a single hydrogen atom. I'm speaking in terms of the theory, but this is, there's a critical point. There's a critical point. And it, I, our individual efforts sometimes are what tips the situation into a qualitatively different mode. And so by, um, by, by, by prayer, by meditation, by contemplating deeply uh, the goodness uh, that is flowering forth in the universe, all of this has an effect but beyond our, our knowing for the most part, but I, I regard it as um, a crucial aspect of our movement forward. Thank you. That, that helps a lot because you see in uh, evolutionary psychology, they're really drilling in on this idea that we are a non-localized phenomenon. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's something I've been thinking about a lot. Thank you. Oh, good. Thanks, Brian. Mary Hurley, yes, please. Mary, you did it. Just a very general thank you. Um, <laughs> I have been involved for many years um, with uh, justice and peace education and endeavoring to um, move people to action, particularly among uh, my own um, community of women religious and working with others. And it's a long history. But my struggle um, since being exposed to Teilhard and Thomas Berry and Brian and Gil Warcello and the whole um, the whole network has been how to integrate this powerful universe, Earth story of which we are with the um, negative times in which we are living. And um, you, it, it, it was so clarifying at the first part and some of the comments, um, you know, the, the church documents, you know, they're good. And um, um, the letter writing and all of that, but it's not enough. But this has been so helpful, some of your comments, Brian, on how to uh, go more deeply, which I keep working on myself, but how to translate that. So I just want to say thank you. <laughs> You're an inspiration, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Uh, Casey, yes. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Brian, for your work. And um, I love the question um, and dialogue between you and Pat. Um, and and I do that as much as I can in my life to um, be, to experience myself as part of the unfolding universe and to help other people experience that through the arts. That's great. My yeah, my my, um, my wish is to help bridge with faith communities um, as an interfaith minister. I, I know that numbers of people are dwindling, but there's still a lot of people in faith. Communities. That's right. How yeah. to bridge this troop with the, their theologies. Wait, ask the question again. Ask it again. How to bridge this amazing, fun, <laughs> foundational truth with those theologies. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you for thinking I know. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, the uh, I really the you know you know Matthew Matthew Fox his his view is which I love is is to um is to find find the the, the mystical tradition within the faith tradition and 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 to celebrate the way in which the the mystics in the middle ages and in the classical times they had insights into the universe that are resonant with what we've learned and and thomas berry's point was uh from the very beginning he said because brian you know you you have the empirical facts that's great but you you've got to tell the story with the music and the music comes from the spiritual traditions so it's and by that he meant you know the mystical traditions i think at that level uh the 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 faith community that you're working with they can feel affirmed because it's coming out of their tradition and then and also that they you'll see the excitement i'm sure you have when they start to realize wow there's more going on here than i realized so and then when you figure it out, you have to write to me and tell me because it's it's a real challenge. It's ongoing one, but but crucial, you know, that um that interaction uh, that was that was Thomas Berry's point that uh, it's a crucial move to find a way uh, to get uh, people to see that the faith traditions and this new cosmology really are partners. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, clarity, <clears throat> clarity, yes, please. I'll try, to, I'll try to get this in to a smaller place. Um, class of 2000 with you as a teacher at uh, Naropa, Oakland. That's where I work at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, trees, um, loss is addition when we are attached and we anticipate loss, we, of, of something that's near and dear to us, something that we've had a relationship, what you talked about last month about the, we evolved through relationship. I've have a view of trees and I live in the desert. So trees are very special to me, um, but they also are very scarred and ugly because they've been through seven years of drought and they're on the side of the road within an industrial park here. And yet they, they prevail. And I took my useless, you know, uh, minor from my undergraduate. I know how to do a tree survey. So as part of my sacralization, I went and tagged each tree and said, hello, I see you here. And this is the last spring that you will bloom. This will be your last, you know, coming to fluorescence. And it breaks my heart. Yeah. But I, I made it into a ritual. And I now look at them as a whole, as a community. And no one else does. But I have to be sensitive on that level to experience that. So that's, you know, that's the what we're living between as, as, yeah. uh, as spiritual beings is that we do, are dealing with the most horrible via negativa. And yet we have such beauty to appreciate yeah. the things that are ugly. And most people don't even know are there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's beautiful. You know, and, You're... and what, what, you know, and what I did to get through that, loss and that pain was to create a ritual that had never been done on this yeah. land in this place yeah. and yeah. i connect it to and i won't ramble much longer uh but it's a fractal you know it's yeah. a fractal and and no matter how big we make it it's still made out of planks and each plank is a universe yeah. so no matter what we do if we're as Eck eckhart says we're moving towards the good we're not moving the whole universe. We're moving with the universe. Yeah. 
Oh, nice. And we trust that. And we have patience. So that was the other thing, the 10,000 years. We just don't have enough patience to appreciate how good we are right now because we have no vision to see what's going to happen. And yet we do because we trust that those who come after us will, will appreciate us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful thank clarity. You. Thank you. And, and thank you for inventing that ritual. That's exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Clarity. Uh, <clears throat> Jeff King, yes. <clears throat> You're muted. You're muted, Jeff. There. <clears throat> Sorry. Hello, Brian. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Uh, my question is, what do you think about the authoritarianism we see in the world and the threat to democracy in our country, in this country? And how do how does that relate to the development of the noosphere? And is there anything we can do about it? You know, I, 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 I feel like I have, you know, very little to say that would, that would add to your own understanding. Um, I'm, I'm as, you know, alarmed by the, the movement to nationalism and fascism as I'm sure you are. Uh, but and I, I do feel that the movement towards democracy is one of the, the primary ways in which the ecozoic and psychozoic is coming forth. But uh, honestly, Jeff, what would, what would your own view be? Uh, I'm just trying to work in my little sphere, uh, uh, you know, donate to groups, I think, that are working to promote democracy and freedom and uh, yeah. working against uh, racism and things like that. And just Great. conversations yeah. in my own group and stuff. Great. I mean, the, the, one, the one hopeful spin I would, I would put on it, and this is not original with me, but the, the great opportunity uh, for the human race is, is to see our, our, sh our collective shadow side and pushed out right in our face. And I think that uh, that is a, an essential part of, of waking up. I mean, just it's, it's, it's so obvious uh, to anyone who is alert that this movement to fascism and, and authoritarianism is, um, is a regression. But um, I, like you, Jeff, I, I'm, I'm, in my own small way, I'm trying to be part of that democratic movement. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for bringing that up. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Lynn Fleming. Yes, hi. Um, when you were on the Deep Time Network, someone characterized your story in Cosmogenesis as on the hero's journey. And you said, oh, no, no, it's a collective journey. But I see such strong connections between the story you tell, your own personal story, and Bill Plotkin's work with the journey of soul initiation, and such a huge um, connection goes through both of those things with cosmogenesis. Um, and looking at that from that viewpoint was has just been so powerful for me. But as I sit here today listening, somehow in this journey of soul initiation, um, I hear what we're saying that we need to be connected, that we're connected with the ecozoic and the land and staying close to nature. But somehow in this um, journey of soul initiation and your story, there's such a connection to the psychozoic. And it just struck me suddenly that that links us to more rituals we can perform that connect us with the cosmos. That's great, Lynn. Oh, that's really great. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, that's great. 
And they, they, they will be rituals that are not only transformative, but they'll be fun, you know? Yes. We, we love to get together. So thank you, Lynn. That's really terrific. So if I'm getting cued that um, we need to be uh, calling ourselves to a close, but I'm going to beg to slip in one last question. Elwin, is your question quick? Um, oh, it's a picture. I can't bring him in. Um, I, he may not be there at the moment. Elwin, you're, you're, she's on mute. She's on mute. See you there. Yeah, I know, but she may have, it's just a picture. She may have stepped away. Um, well, in, in the interest of, of um, honoring everyone's time, I think um, um, uh, I'm, I'm being um, <laughs> suggested that we uh, do bring ourselves to a close. It was, uh, Penny, I think there was one other thing you wanted to make sure we got in. Yes. Um, there's been a lot of interest in what you mentioned last month, which was the Human Energy Project conference that you're planning. Yes. And what are those themes looking like? And will is it open to the public? Um, and anything else you want to say about that? Yes, it, it's um, early November. Um, and at, it, it will be uh, at the um, at UC Berkeley on the UC Berkeley campus. Uh, and the idea would be to to gather together people that are interested in exploring the idea of the noosphere. And there would be, you know, obviously talks, but also smaller uh, workshops for, for dialogue and discussion. And um, <clears throat> the, there, you know, there are a number of, of speakers, but I, I think just to name two that are familiar to many of you, um, Ilya Delio will be speaking. And um, John Hot as well, but um, for those of you that are, you know, that are interested in coming, I th I think we'll have a great time. It'll be just another moment for the, this collective um, exploration of the noosphere. So that's <laughs> just a, a few months off. But <laughs> anybody that wants to come, the. Uh, to just to be in touch with the, it hasn't even been announced yet. It hasn't even been announced. So, but uh, human energy, the, the, the website where it will be announced is, is just human energy, one word, human energy dot I O. Human energy dot I O. And will there be a <laughs> virtual aspect to it as well? I hope so, but that is, you know that I'm not I'm not part of the planning committee, uh, but I hope there will. But I, yeah, the idea was to have it in person as much as possible. That's excellent, excellent. Gail, any last comments? I have a a wonderful quote to okay, close us yeah. out with. All right, I do, and I got to make it as fast as I can. If you can find your um, the place where you raise your hand. I'd like to know how many people would be interested in making a non-local, local, local uh, meditation group together to invite the Noel Sphere and um, this work to continue. And if you are, then I, I'm not going to organize it here, but I would know whether to bother to organize it. So can you let me know if you would be interested in, say, meditating once a week? Um, okay. <laughs> so now you need to read your read those things I send you so that you can find out what how to move forward. Thank you so much. This will be great. I look forward to that. Well, before we conclude with a celebratory congratulations to a life of inspiring students formally, I mean, I know you're just going to do that forever, so it won't be <laughs> it won't be ending fully, but this afternoon is a is a big marker for you in stepping away from regular teaching duties. Um, any comments before I read the closing and then we send you off with our best wishes? How does it feel to be closing out that part of your life? <laughs> Very quickly, I'll say this that um, I uh, I've, I've been. Uh, just 
regretting um, retiring, you know, for a long time. Just, I just, I didn't want to even think about it. Uh, but, but spending this time together with with all of you has just charged me up, and now I'm looking forward to the the ceremony. <laughs> Why? Because I realized that that you know we can still be together pursuing things. Uh, even though I will no longer be hired by a, a university. Yeah, thanks, Penny. Well, just know you are always welcome to this lifelong learning community. Good. Just say the word. Good. <laughs> All right. And here's, the, here's one of your wonderful quotes. Whatever mysterious force that has been at work throughout all these years has not gone to sleep or retired just because we humans came along. All you have to do is let your consciousness be flooded by that force and you will know what to do. And we wish that for you as you have more time in your day. But community, um, can we send off Brian with our great gratitude? for all he's brought, and brought forward. <laughs> hey! Everybody unmute, everybody Thank unmute. You, Ryan. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Thank you, Brian. Thank, Brian. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You so much, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank 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 you. Makes me feel great. Thank you so much. I will now. I will. Thank you. Peace.